I don't believe it. It's not possible. I didn't say it would be easy, Neo. I just said it would be the truth. Stop. Let me out. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. Earlier today, I was recording with my good friend Perch, and we were having a conversation. I was like, you know, every week I, I have like 12 to 15 comics maybe on my, my pull list that I'm supposed to read. A few that I'm, I'm planning on reviewing, obviously, for this week at Batman or this week at X-Men. Obviously, like an a Amazing Spider-Man 75 or Inferno number one. And I'm finding it more and more difficult just to get through through those comic books on a, on a weekly basis. And I was like, it, are you feeling the same thing? And Perch's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling things like that as well. It's, it's the quality of the comics that's uh, really bring me down. I was like, yeah, I, I kind of get what you're saying. And I was, I was, you know, as an Intel analyst, I used to look at the uh, problem sets and I would come up with the uh, solutions or not solutions, answers that would, that would answer the, the questions on why is this happening? How is this happening kind of thing? And I thought maybe I would look at uh, two of the reasons that I think the the um, it's hard to get excited every single week for for um, for the new comic book day to get through the repile right now. Mostly in my in my estimation, for what my experience is, it's ruining characters that I actually love, and then just bad comic book storytelling. And they are certainly related to each other, but I do think they're exclusive um, problems. There's 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 one one problem that's happening here and one problem happening here. There's some overlapping, obviously, with motivation and stuff. But I think the reasons that they're happening and the people benefiting from the two issues are kind of unique. I wanted to talk about the day, that today. And it's not just like one group benefiting. Whenever you have these kind of changes, whether it's a structural change on a government or maybe a structural change on um, how airports are set up, right? You're going to have your, your, your main beneficiary, whoever's kind of the, uh, the motivation behind the changes, but you're also going to have what we call inintelligent second, third, fourth order effects. Things that perhaps you didn't anticipate happening beneficiaries that you didn't think would happen, you know, things that had to come online to um, to kind of adapt to the change. So for the two problems, I'm going to separate them to uh, the ruining characters and bad comics. I'm going to have the primary beneficiary in my estimation, then I'm going to have a couple others. And now, obviously, I'm coming from my perspective i know i have retailers on here i have comic creators on here i have fans that uh, or comic fans that have been reading perhaps decades longer than me and i've also got comic fans that have been reading you know maybe for only for a couple of years so everyone's going to have their own unique perspective so i hope to hear from you guys and gals on what you think or who you think are the primary beneficiaries of these two things that i think personally are making a new comic book day less and less exciting uh, as the weeks go by. And this is going to change. This is this, this stuff's all cynical. There's going to be a House of X, Powers of Ten uh, story that comes along, and I'm and I'm not going to be able to put it down. There's going to be another Doomsday Clock, another Three Jokers kind of kind of story, Batman White, White Knight. Something like that's going to come along. It's just not happening right now, which I definitely think is uh, contributing to the malaise. Now, before I get into this, I do want to say if you are following the channel, you've been watching the videos, but haven't taken the plunge yet, consider subscribing to Thinking Critical YouTube. I think you'll enjoy the content here. Also, tomorrow we are going to be having a live stream called The Comics Aficionados. Perch will be there. Uh, Larry King. Who else could be there? Doc. Nerdy Girl Creates. There's another one that I'm forgetting. But the gang will all be there. We'll have a lot of fun talking about comic books. So definitely uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications, and join us for the live stream tomorrow. Now, getting into this, as far as uh, who's benefiting from ruining the characters and then who's benefiting from the bad comic book storytelling. I'm going to go into the characters first because I actually think this is a bigger problem. I think people can put up with a lower quality of storytelling as long as the characters themselves may remain true and true um, representations of who those, these characters have always been. And when I say ruining characters, a lot of it is character deconstruction, which we see a lot of nowadays, changing the motivations of the characters. You know, not really deconstructing, but all of a sudden just, just changing what the character represents, what their, their, uh, their motivation is, what they're going after. A lot of retconning nowadays. 
they're really going back and changing fundamental aspects of what would have motivated the character to begin with, really kind of backdooring and altering the characters that way to kind of fit the image of whatever it is that they're trying to portray. And I don't think it's always the creators. I think a lot of times the creators are willing participants, but I think mostly this is coming from up, up high and not even really at the leadership of the comic book level. I don't think uh, C.B. Sibolsky and Jim Lee, and Daniel Cherry, all the time, they, like they're the driving people behind this. I think mostly, and the key beneficiary to a lot of these changes are corporate entities and entertainment who are looking to alter Western culture. They want to uh, kind of fundamentally alter the way Western culture operates, the way we look at each other, the way we see heroism, the way we look at morals, principles, and things of that nature. And when you look at an aspirational hero like a Superman and Captain America, which we definitely checked, uh, talked about here on the channel, and what they represent and the key core components of the characters themselves, they can be outright dangerous to the long-term goals of some of these corporate entities and, and entertainment and what they're trying to, the fundamental changes that they're trying to instill within the culture. And I do believe that. I'm not understating or overstating that. I think that is a primary goal of a lot of corporations in, um, in, in entertainment. And if you look at uh, DC Comics, not only are they a part of, uh, of Warner Brothers, Warner Media, they're part of AT&T. Now they're going to become a part of this big merger with Discovery next year, I believe. And then we've got you know, Disney, a highly influential <laughs> uh, corporate entity that is obviously uh, has a foundation in entertainment as far as theme parks, movies, TV shows, channels, stuff like that. And I think this stuff is all kind of coming down on high as part of what they need to change. When you have a Disney that's trying to maybe changes, make changes to culture, push things a certain direction, or you have AT&T or, or Warner Brothers wanting to push things in a corporate uh, certain direction, you have to take out a character like Superman, Captain America, but you just can't kill him, right? They've tried that many times. It never holds. You have to bring the character back. So now you have to fundamentally change who the character is and what they represent to more align with what the goals of the company are. And believe me, th this has nothing to do with making money. I don't think Disney looks at Marvel Comics as a money-making venture. I don't think they want them to lose a lot of money, but I don't think they care if they make money either. And I'm pretty certain at Warner Media and AT&T feel the same way about DC Comics. They are looking to alter these characters because they also want to alter them on the big screen and the other mediums that are more influential, obviously, than comic books, TVs, movies, streaming, and all these things. Well, what happens if you go out and you create a Man of Steel, right? A very dark take on Superman. Well, you have a lot of Superman fans that have been invested in the character since they were kids, you know, decades upon decades, and they're not going to accept that. And they're going to be very vocal about that. Well, you can't have these fans around anymore. So you have to keep pushing and pushing the boundaries of what Superman can be, break him apart, rebuild him in a new image. And some fans are going to accept it. And they're going to go, well, I, I still love Superman. He's just a little different now. You know, I give up. And, you know, just kind of go along with the plan. And then you're going to have other fans who are going to be like, well, that's not my Superman. I'm leaving. And you hope that they no longer object. And these changes that they're making to the characters and what these superheroes represent are more accepted. And you're going to have less outcry and less pushback. And eventually, Superman is just, you know, Red Sun Superman. He's no longer the, the Superman that represents truth, justice in the American way. Or Captain America is, um, you, you know... Uh, somebody who's disappointed in this country that knows it was never fair and never represented anything good, which is kind of what we're getting. We've been getting pushed on Captain America for a long time. What Captain America and Superman really represent are principles that oppose things like nihilism and moral relativism and therefore are obstacles to the changes that are trying to be enacted in culture. And that's, uh, I think that's the primary beneficiary of all these things happening. That's why when you see heroes in comics and on the big screen and stuff, they're just as flawed as the villains nowadays. When you see villains, they're just as heroic as, as the heroes. And it's all this weird morally gray stuff. And it's absolutely by design. 
Now, there are going to be some other effects that happen because of these changes and other beneficiaries. Besides the, you know, corporations being able to fundamentally alter these characters, hopefully die down the uh, the resistance to the changes when they use them in other mediums so they can push forward their agendas. There are other beneficiaries, and this one might, well, I think people will probably agree with me, but like local comic shops. Right now, if you have a nice, large back issue inventory, are absolutely a beneficiary of all the character assassination and deconstruction that's going on with the within the comic book industry. People that are rejecting this new version of Superman, these new versions of of Captain America and other heroes, not all of them are willing to acquiesce and just accept the changes. And then not all of them are willing to just walk away and just say, you know what? I don't, I guess I'm done with Superman. They still want to read Superman, but they don't want to read the Superman that's out there. So they go to the local comic shop and they start buying back issues. And they go, you know what? I never read this Superman's run from 1972. Let's go check it out. Turns out this is the Superman I like. Might not be the most classic Superman story of all times, but it's better than anything that's being printed right now. And so a lot of local comic shops, thankfully, retailers are benefiting from the destruction of these characters and heroes that they've loved, you know, essentially all their lives. You know, there's an 80-year backlog on a character like Superman when they start changing him. Where you can go back. Nobody's read 80 years of Superman, right? <laughs> you know what anybody do you think anyone's read every single issue of Superman or you know Superman related comics like a Justice League? That would be it would be nearly impossible. Eric Breen's read a lot. I guarantee he hasn't read every Superman comic. So there's so many things that you can go back and read. And even if you have, you've likely forgotten all these things, right? You can go back and it feels like you read it for the first time again, or you're rediscovering a version of the character that you always love to begin with. And there have been changes to a Superman and Captain America throughout time. Certainly the, the Superman that we saw in the 1940s is different than the Superman we had in the 1960s and the Superman we had in the 1980s and even the Superman we had, you know, in, um, in the 90s. They're all different, but the core of the character remained the same as they adapted to the ages. There are different interpretations. They get new powers and, uh, and all those sorts of things. So you could go back to a moment in time and the character that you love is still there. They're just a little bit different. So local comic shops are absolutely benefiting from what the publishers are doing to ruin their, their, uh, their heroes. Now, the third beneficiary of this would be people like myself, comic book critics who are spotlighting and calling out the publishers and all the bull crap that they're doing, whether it be here on YouTube, a podcast, which I do have, web bloggers, et cetera, comic book critics that are putting a spotlight on this and saying, hey, look at this, what you're doing here is wrong. And I can tell you right now, just based on what I see, when I call out the things that are happening in the industry, the way that they're ruining characters, a lot of the stuff like a Tom King, a Brian Michael Bendis, a Jason Aaron, a John Ridley, and others are doing to these characters, those videos perform better than other content that I do, whether it be news segments, retrospectives, and things of that nature. And the reason is, is because people love these characters. And... They want to check in and see what's happening. Or if they read something and they said that was some bullshit, they want to see if somebody else is having a similar action. Or if if they are, what's their reasoning? Is it different from mine? Or do we have a are we coming to the same conclusion? If I see it from a different perspective, I want to make some comments so we can talk about these things, you know, being a part of the community. So definitely critics of these things, and I am definitely one of those. I'm a, I am a beneficiary of all the madness that's going on with the publishers and the way that they're treating their characters. There are a lot of comic book fans that want to keep up with the characters. You know, maybe they'll go into back issues, but they don't want to support what the publishers are doing right now. So they'll come to a channel like mine, maybe a channel like Purchase uh, or, or others, check in, see what's happening with the characters, keep up with it know that they made the right just choice and keep moving along. Or perhaps they come in and I do a video about something then right this happened and maybe they go back and you know maybe they'll try and dip their toe back in or keep up with it and maybe see if it keeps going on. And if it's time to return to that character. I do that with wrestling. I hate Monday Night Raw. I refuse to watch it. But I listen to podcasts that review it. And if there's a specific 
scenario that happens on Monday Night Raw or a, a promo or there's a match and they said it was really good, I will go back and consume that. But I don't want to consume the rest of it because it's so bad. And I think there are a lot of comic book fans that are in that boat right now. So those are the three big beneficiaries, in my opinion, for ruining characters. First of all, it's the, the big corporations and entertainment that are trying to fundamentally alter uh, the culture within, in, uh, within Western countries. So you got to take these pillars of morality, uh, you know, principled characters, and you have to bring them down so they can introduce these things and push their agenda. Local comic shops are definitely benefiting as people turn their backs on what's happening in comics right now and go and look to the past for the versions of the characters they like. And certainly critics like myself are benefiting because people want to check in and see what's happening. Now, as far as the bad comic front, that one's a little bit different. When I say bad comic storytelling, it's like decompressed storytelling is so terrible right now. Uh, it, when I read a comic book and it, the one issue is an issue, like there's a beginning, middle, and end, and perhaps there's a, a cliffhanger on the end to get you to the next one, or there's some subplots that are going on. But within the comic issue, and I'll give you an example, Shadow Man right now, it feels mind-blowing. Like, wow, Shadow Man is telling comic books like they're supposed to be done. Everything, it feels like everything is decompressed nowadays. Uh, the other problems that I see are, are creators not using the comic book medium, also using the comic book medium not to tell great action-based stories, but for creating propaganda. We see that all over the place. Now, obviously, that last part with the bad comic book storytelling certainly um, kind of feeds into the first thing we were talking about as well. That's uh, another one of the, the effects that you get with them pushing these things. You get bad storytelling where, where stories feel like propaganda rather than um, like social commentary or true uh, stories of the characters. Now, who benefits from this? Once again, I don't think um, in the short term within comic books, many people benefit financially from the degradation of the quality of comic book storytelling. I, I just don't. You know, I think manga probably benefits, but that's probably a, a third or fourth order effect. The, the primary beneficiaries of these uh, stories are writers who are using comic books or the comic book industry as a stepping stone into another preferred vocation. Almost every comic book nowadays feels like a proof of concept Netflix pitch rather than episodic action-based storytelling, which is what comic books really are supposed to be. So they get to go in there. Comic books are relatively cheap. You, you can uh, take more risks than comic books than you can take in other places. And they get to have uh, you know their ideas put out there, whether it's creator-owned, uh, whether it's in, in the big two or whatnot. And really, uh, you can go and, and present your ideas and say, hey, look, this is what I did here. This is what I did there. And hopefully, you can step onto being like uh, maybe writing for television, streaming, things of that nature. And that's why we're seeing when you're reading a lot of comic books, action scenes are at a bare minimum these days. Characters and set designs are basic bitch. You know, what you're looking at is as basic as it could ever be. It's boring. It's lifeless. It's not fun to look at. Stories are lasting five to six issues, and they're almost completely devoid of subplots. You know, they're all just like, hey, here's here's a, a an episode or uh, of a Netflix show, and then, then you know the whole thing is is a season, and that's why uh, you'll see a lot of comic writers want to think about their work in seasons rather than an ongoing like shared universe. We don't even get a shared universe anymore. Does it feel like? The Captain America and Captain America and the Captain America and Avengers and wherever else he is. Does it feel like the same character? Does it feel like they're operating in the same world? No, because they're not. It's all hodgepodge put together. And it's absolutely destroying the shared comic book universe, which is one of the enormous selling points of the comic book medium. Look at the MCU. It even uh, transfers over into movies, shockingly. Go look at the, the Netflix uh, Marvel series, Shared Universe. You know, things kind of tying together, and then you get this climax where all the, the characters get together. Very, very big selling point. Almost been completely removed from comic books at this point because they're they're not there to um, 
to present comics in their best form. It's not going to have the coolest action pieces. It's not going to have the best stories. It's not going to have the most cohesive shared universe where everything makes sense. These are Netflix bitches. Also, the, the characters are rarely three-dimensional nowadays. You get an overwhelmingly one-sided narrative on almost any uh, social issue. You know, complex social issues and political issues that are presented in comic books are the most uncomplex things in the world. There's one side that's right, and everybody else is wrong. And it gets very uh, boring, and it certainly gets annoying, and we're definitely seeing that in other mediums as well. But essentially everything... The reason a lot of people, if, if you're not enjoying comic books, everything's being so dumbed down for you that you don't have to think anymore. Who wants to read a story or consume something, some entertainment, without ever having to think for themselves? And that's a, one of the real things that's hurting comic books uh, right now, and that's definitely a problem with the storytelling. Now, as far as who's benefiting this besides those writers that are using comic books as a stepping stone to maybe go write uh, you know, within... You know, an animated series, go write on Disney Plus, go do some streaming, maybe go into a writer's room for a movie pitch or something like that. I do think independent comic book creators that see that there's there's a huge segment of fans that aren't being serviced with good comic book stories that are identifying this and going out and catering to them are certainly benefiting it. Comic readers... A lot, of, a lot of comic readers have left, but the ones that have stuck, stuck around are still out there searching for good quality content that's new. Sure, they like to go back and read the back issue stuff, and that stuff's all great, and I love doing those retrospectives. But you want to read something new so you can talk about your friends and you know that you're all experiencing it for the first time, and it's amazing. And you want comic books for, when it's clear that the comic book creators want to make comic books. And that's not always clear these days. Fans are willing to go out there and support, individually support creators, whether it be Patreon, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, uh, so they can go out there and create their stories and get it to them, like, uh, you know, not through through mass distribution, but individual distribution. And, the, and, and fans are willing to pay top dollar. Oftentimes, to, um, you're paying upwards of two and a half, three times more than you would expect to pay for the same page count in a comic book shop. But... You're supporting a creator that loves comic books and wants comic book storytelling to be better. And a lot of fans are so fed up that they're willing to pay that premium. And those creators are absolutely uh, benefiting from this by going out, identifying that market and, and going out there and um, creating things for them. There's so much gatekeeping and blacklisting within the comic book industry, you know, the big two and even some of the, the smaller publishers it's become an unfair system. Nobody wants to go out there and support something that they know is inherently unfair. Nobody wants to root for, for an unfair system. So I think a lot of people, once they recognize what's going on, and if you're, you're keen to these things, you're, you're, on, uh, you're, you're watching YouTube, maybe you're going to blogs, uh, you're reading up on the news and you see these things, you get fed up with it. And you're willing to go out there and, uh, and, uh, and support these creators. You know, fans want to see, comic fans want heroes versus villains in one way or another. It doesn't always have to be superheroes. But you need a protagonist, you need an antagonist, it needs to be conflict and resolution. And we're just not getting that in a lot of storytelling. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are putting that out there on their own dime, taking a lot of risk, and they're definitely being rewarded. Now, the third beneficiary from this, and it's, it's kind of sad, is the trade market. Often these decompressed serialized comics that don't read like comics, they suck reading monthly, but if you get them in a trade or collected, they read pretty good. Now, if you go back and you try to read, uh, you know, just a one story of Fantastic Four from the 1970s, there's a lot of subplots going on, and there's going to be a lot of things that you're reading about that will not be resolved within the whatever story that you're reading. And I can understand how that could become somewhat annoying to a reader if you, you, you thought you got the collection or you got the trade. It, it, some of the story doesn't finish, but the primary story finishes, but the, the subplots are there to keep you coming back, reading the monthly comics. And those things obviously read better monthly. And then the modern comics read better in trades. Now, we've seen graphic novel sales dwarf 
and I mean dwarf, like three to one as far as dollars, comic book sales in 2020. And it's been on this track, you know, for the last five years. The, they were kind of a level, and then it's like, Whoosh! and they, they kind of left comic sales behind as far as graphic novel sales. And we've seen comic sales specifically via book sales, book sale channels, big book channels are climbing yearly and finally past the direct market in 2019 and are steadily climbing as there are some gains in the direct market, but it, it's it's more stagnated than what we're seeing in the book channels. Well, that sucks because obviously a lot of those bookstore channels are big retailers or e-tailers, e-retail tailors like Barnes and Noble, Walmart, Amazon. And that's directly at the expense of the direct market local comic shops. Now, certainly your local comic shop carries trades and they carry manga likely, but oftentimes you can't afford to compete with the prices or the discounts that are um, automatically available from a Walmart or an Amazon because the amount that they're ordering, you know, the, it brings the price, uh, the, the prices down and local comic shops can't a lot of times afford as big a discount. And when you're looking at the trades, obviously they're a lot more expensive. So a normal discount on a comic book might be, you know, uh, 65 cents, but on a trade, it could be $5, you know, depending on, you know, if it's a, on the size of it, or maybe it's a couple dollars and those things, you know, when it's measured in cents, it doesn't look like you're the, the difference is all that big before this, between this Amazon deal and your local comic shop. But when, once you start measuring it in dollars and stuff, people are definitely incentivized to kind of leave, uh, their local comic shop behind and, and buy their trade and stuff through these other retailers. So your Walmarts and your Amazons are absolutely the primary beneficiaries of this writing for the trade mentality, in my opinion. All right. So I, I saw the clock. We're at like 27 bits. I don't want to go too long on this, but uh, you know, I did think these things out. I definitely want to hear from you guys in your, in your opinion, who are the, who's benefiting from ruining comic characters? Who's benefiting from the, the degradation in quality as far as storytelling. Not really telling stories in a manner that best fits the comic book medium. Certainly telling stories that benefit other mediums or telling stories that you know are gonna read better in, in a trade market rather than monthly serialized comic books. I definitely wanna hear from you guys. These are my thoughts on some of the reasons that I, I think it's hard. It's harder to get excited about comic books right now uh, I definitely know that there's going to be something great around the corner. It could be the 10 lives and deaths of Wolverine. It could be something else. We know we got a crisis coming up from DC. Sounds like everything at Marvel's about to reset next year. So we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern and it feels that way, at least from my, from my opinion. And these are just, uh, I thought I'd break it down for you guys. Definitely want to hear from you.